Legend of Total War here, and today I want to talk a little bit about the state of Total War Warhammer 3. You know, go over some community posts, go over the data, and sort of interpret what, what the hell's going on with this game. You know, what happened with Shadows of Change? Is it a success? Is it a failure? Let's let's dive into it. So depending on where you source out your information, whether that be the Reddit, YouTube, the Steam forums, you're going to get different answers. And a lot of people will have confirmation bias. They've got they've got a a uh, situation that they want to occur and then they'll look at the data and see how that uh, affirms their their view on the situation i don't think that's a very honest way of, of doing it but this is pretty standard so some people will look at a uh, the, the, the smallish boycott that happened and look at it and be like oh, the boycott was a complete success because of certain factors and then other people especially on the steam forum will look at it and be like the the boycott completely failed this dlc did just as well as any other Total War Warhammer DLC, and it's all just negative naysayers and all that kind of stuff. And I think that both of those sort of statements are completely incorrect, and that the answer is somewhere in the middle, and that I feel like this here summarizes my feelings on the situation uh, pretty, pretty eloquently. So he says in this one here, um, I just realized today we all lost. Yes, it might be satisfying to look at the Steam charts according to the play account, SO. See, it seems not to be a success. Looks like a victory at first, but it's a bittersweet one. We all want the game to be successful. We all want CA to create quality content for years. Of course, we are not willing to pay any price for that. Today, it might look like CA lost and the community won, but in fact, CA and we lost together. A bad DLC is not a win for the community. A DLC not selling well is not a win for the community. Thanks to CA, there is no winner today. And I 100% agree with this statement here. And I think that it is basically correct. Nobody... Um, that is actually invested in Total War Warhammer 3. I need to make that distinction because um, if you're somebody who doesn't play Total War Warhammer 3, this doesn't affect you at all, really. Um, it only affects people that are either playing the game, making content on the game, like YouTubers and Twitch, uh, Twitch streamers, and Creative Assembly themselves. None of, none of, nobody wins from this. Whether you're an executive or whether you're actually making the like the artwork or programming the stuff at Creative Assembly. Oh, please, they don't have programmers. Um, <laughs> um, nobody wins from this situation. This is a very... Nobody can come across this and, and say, we triumphed, we won, because this is going to be tough to recover from. And it's something that we need to work together with Creative Assembly, because at the end of the day, they're the ones captaining the ship. Um, we need to work together to try to get things back on board. Because I feel like Shadows of Change is a bit of a lost cause. This is just going to be a write-off. But Thrones of Decay, that's guaranteed to get developed. You know, we're not at the stage yet of getting Total War 3 Kingdomed. You know, seeing the future of Total War Warhammer show up. Uh, in order for things to, to do well, we need to sort of help Creative Assembly direct Thrones of Decay production in the right direction. So that you guys get what you want and that everybody is happy. Because at the end of the day, that's, a, that's what you want. You want everybody to be happy. You want the players to look at a content and go, yes, I like the look of that. I'm going to buy it. And then they buy it. And then they feel like they're getting their money's worth. Creative Assembly exceed their sales um, quotas. And the play account for Total War Warhammer 3 increases. Everybody happies. Everybody wins in that situation. But that is, that is exactly the opposite that happened with Shadows of Change. And we can look over numbers and sort of um, assess that. Now, in terms of the... Um, the Steam charts. Looking at it right now, it's a little bit old data. The um, Decisions of Change DLC is way down. It's still on the top sellers list in like number 100 or something, but it's way down. But I was monitoring it when it first came out, and it's really important to look at it from a global perspective. There were many people looking at it from a local perspective, They're like, look, it's number three in my local one. But then it was like 19, or it was between 19 and 10 uh, for globally. It fluctuated as people were either purchasing it or or whatever, buying it from a third-party site, who knows. Um, but if you have a look at that, the, the difference between being number 10 on the global top sellers list and being number like two or three or even four, there is a big difference. There's even sometimes a big difference between being number 10 and being number nine. It's not like it's a linear graph where, oh, if you're number 10, you get 1,000 sales. And if you're number nine, you get 2,000 sales. And if you're number eight, you get 3,000 sales. No, it doesn't work like that. It's more like if you're number 10, it's 1,000. If you get number one, it's a million sort of thing. There's a big distinction between uh, each individual step. Um, which happens in everything when it comes down to uh, global 
uh, top performers, the number one gets the bulk of it. And in fact, number one sometimes gets more sales than the whole rest of the other platform combined. So looking at that chart and seeing its number, just understand it's not a linear chart. It's it's, it's probably a bit more nuanced than that. Now, in terms of what that means for Shadows of Change, in the past, Total War Warhammer DLC has performed higher than top 10. Probably never like number one, especially when a game like Starfield is coming out. Uh, but it has performed higher than top 10. So, and this is based on revenue, not units sold. And with a higher price, you would expect higher revenue, unless of course it's not selling units, which is probably what happened. Um, but people compared it to previous DLCs, and which is, I think, an accurate representation to do, and that Shadows of Change performed in the bottom five for across all Total War Warhammer DLC, at least in terms of the Steam charts. We don't know the exact numbers on the Square Assembly <laughs> actually provides us like financial supports on that, but one thing that can definitely be assessed is that Shadows of Change was not... The probably the worst selling Total War Warhammer DLC, but it is the worst selling DLC in quite a few years at the very least because a lot of the worst performing Warhammer DLCs is stuff that happened in Total War Warhammer 1. And a lot of people forget that Total War Warhammer 1 was relatively small. It didn't have a huge player count and it didn't, Total War Warhammer didn't start getting a pretty nice player count up until midway through Total War Warhammer 2. And then a lot of people say, well, Warhammer 3 is only just beginning. It's, it's not at its midlife cycle yet. The thing is to keep in mind, though, is that when Warhammer 2 came out, it took all the players from Total War Warhammer 1, they just immediately leave Total War Warhammer 1 and went straight to Warhammer 2. And when Warhammer 3 came out, that's just not what happened. And what's been happening is that there's been a slow decay. Total War Warhammer, as a single game, which it all is, Total War Warhammer 1, 2, and 3, it's all the same fucking game, right? Anyone who thinks otherwise, you're deluding yourself. Um, so... The way it worked is that it grew up until 2020, and it's been shrinking a little bit since then, because that was its peak, but it's been shrinking quicker lately. Now, we can interpret these through these uh, Steam charts here. So, last 30 days, we can see the peak play account was 33,000, and this is for Shadows of Change. That happened on the 3rd of September, so this is two days after it came out. And the reason why I think it had a higher play account than when it first came out is because it's a weekend. Uh, typically speaking, more people will play on the weekends than they do during the during the week, only by a, a small margin. But anyway, you can see here the previous days were fairly close to 30,000 as well. Now that is the lowest peak player count post a DLC launch since before Warden and Paunch. And we'll, we'll go through all that. If we have a look at the... Um, the Forge of the Chaos Dwarfs, that managed to achieve 73,000 uh, peak player count. But another thing to keep in mind here is that if you only look at one piece of data, you can get a, a distorted view of things. Looking at the peak player count is definitely important, but also looking at the average players, right? How much are people playing it across even like the low times? Because the, the higher average count basically lets you know that people are playing the game for longer. Now, this is something that Blizzard actually understands very well. And I fucking hate Blizzard. I think Blizzard is scum. And I kind of want the company to just burn in hell. Uh, burn in the same hell that they created, essentially. It's, it's irredeemable, Blizzard. But they understand one thing. Keep people playing your game. Don't let them leave. This is why the games are super friggin' grindy. Because they understand that if a person has invested a certain amount of time in a game, then they feel that their financial obligations towards the game, financial spending on the game, feels justified. If you're spending 10 hours a day on a game, then what's buying the Battle Pass, really? You know, what's buying a few cosmetics if you're spending, you know, your entire month on the game? That's the sort of justification that you hear happen. Now, when it comes to Total War, you, you hear the similar sort of rhetoric. Oh, you know, you could go out for a nice meal, or I can get a hundred hours out of this out of this DLC. You, you hear the same sort of rhetoric. People who are getting the same amount of time, uh, getting a good amount of time out of their purchase, that's what you essentially want to achieve. Now, if people are not getting that, you're going to get fewer sales. And one way to see that is average play account. So don't just look at peak play account. But anyway, if we go through it. So Forge of the Chaos Wolf there, and if we have a look over here with... Um, uh, this was the launch of Immortal Empires. So 
it looks like it's got a very low average player count, but that's because the Immortal Empires would have been launched midway through the month, I think. So if we have a look in September, it's actually higher because it was um, still riding off um, Immortal Empires' initial success. So that one there is actually a more accurate representation of how Immortal Empires launched at, and we can see here it's been decaying ever since. Uh, which is typically what you'll see. Most games will launch, most, most big games that have a franchise backing them, they'll launch strong and then decay over time until they hit sort of like a, um, a plat, uh, not a plat, like a, they hit a, st a stabilization factor and then they, they just, that's the, the core player base right there. And what we're trying to find out here is what is the core number of players for Total War Warhammer 3 at the moment? It's roughly around 15 to 16,000 uh, average players, roughly. Now, if we go back to Warhammer 2 and have a look at before it died off, obviously it still keep going as of today. People are still playing it now. Not, not as much as they used to. But if we have a look back at the last DLC for Warhammer 2 was here in July 2021. This was the, uh, the Silence and Fury, so the Beastman rework there, where we can see we've got an average player count of 29,000 with a peak player of 74,000. And you can see the subsequent months prior to it, the average player count is higher than what it is now currently with Total War Warhammer 3. Right? If we have a look here, there, there are some high player counts, but this is directly after a DLC there, and it's, it dropped off quite significantly, and it wasn't the first time either. Now, if we have a look, when was when was the last time that uh, Total Warhammer 2 hit 17,000 concurrents? Happened over here, but that didn't happen that often, at least prior to its its big uh, sort of peak, which happened in May 2020, which was Warden and Paunch. And then you've got, where is it, in here somewhere, 67,000. This was um, Twisted and Twilight, so you had a really good solid end to Total War Warhammer 2 that Warhammer 3 initially capitalized on but has pissed it away for the most part. Total War Warhammer 3 is decaying in play account. So that is something that Creative Assembly needs to turn around. This is a game that is not growing the, the, the franchise and it could be assessed I think in two different ways as to why this is happening. Uh, one, people are getting pissed off with the company doing um, poor ethical decisions, I suppose. And the other thing is just franchise fatigue. The game has been going on now since, what, 2016? It's been going on for quite a long time. And people just sort of get sick of things over time unless massive innovations happen. Now, massive innovations were happening with Warhammer 2. I don't know if you guys remember, but there was a time when in Warhammer 2, if you were caught at sea, you had no choice but to auto-resolve that battle. You just, you just couldn't fight the battles manually. And then they changed it so you could fight the battles manually. I mean, it wasn't naval battles, but you could at least fight battles at sea. And various changes that happened throughout Total War Warhammer 2. Do, does anybody remember the uh, the proving ground for um, the beta for uh, for Warhammer 2? A completely opt-in beta that gave a different, uh, basically, stat set to how things worked in Warhammer 2. And does anyone remember when Warhammer 2 they basically nerfed ports, and then people hated it, and then they did a hot fix almost a couple of days later and fixed it. Patching was a lot quicker with Warhammer 2 and they were a lot more active and also there was a lot more free shit happening with Warhammer 2. Look at all the free legendary lords. You know, you've got Imric, you've got Tretch Craventail, top quality right there. No, I'm kidding. Uh, you've got uh, Gorok, you've got Dryker. There's a lot of really good legendary lords that are completely free if you just own the game or another piece of DLC. Um, with Warhammer 3, what do you get? You get heroes, which they don't provide much replay value. And don't get me wrong, it's good to get heroes, but if we're only getting heroes as a free uh, side of things, what you're doing there is you're, you're telling the people who are just supporting the, peop uh, the, the game by playing it that they're not good enough, basically. The only people who are really going to get the most out of this are people who are going to pay the money for it. Uh, and I think that's quite unfortunate. So the, the player count is decaying. And it's not it's not doom and gloom yet, but what we're seeing here is a is a bit of a leaky ship. It's starting to creak a little bit, and I think some people are starting to uh, basically take their ticket to get out um, of Total War Warhammer, which is unfortunate because this game is supposed to live on for another three or four more years, and uh, it doesn't really have that much f further to fall before um, before the future of Total War Warhammer three. Now I don't think we're in danger of that right now, and it's certainly not going to happen in the next few months or even in the next year. But this is something to seriously consider if things like this number here 16,000 it's probably going to be a little bit higher once the once september is actually over 
But if we have a look at this number here, I reckon between September and December, we are probably going to see a lower average play account some, sometime between. So probably in November, we are probably going to see maybe 14,000, 13,000, 12,000 average play account, which is the lowest it's been so far. And then if Thrones of Decay does the same shit as Shadows of Change, then expect it to go down even further. And what this means is that you're not going to get Ind or Koresh or the, the Sea Peoples or whatever. Sea Peoples, the, the, I don't know, the Amazons. Uh, they're, they're, you're not going to get them because the game is going to die off. The only way to get those is if the, um, the play number goes up. Uh, but the thing is, that's not your responsibility. That's Creative Assembly's responsibility. Anyway, things to assess with that kind of numbers. Basically, just to summarize, we all lost, okay? Nobody who's nobody who is actually invested in this game is happy about this situation because you know it's been review bombed. It's overwhelmingly negative on Steam. Twelve percent positive reviews over the past uh, just recently. Uh, that's not good, but at the same time, I'm not going to tell people not to review bomb it. You should use your voice heard wherever you want. I support people who want to leave a positive review and a negative review. If you want to purchase this DLC, if you want to not purchase it for whatever reason, you should exercise your free will with all this kind of stuff. And I think um, my job here is to try to give you information about how best to use your voice to achieve what you want. And I think what the player base wants, most of all, is higher quality content at a more reasonable price and also better patching. Now we've had a few hot fixes, which is definitely good, but it has not improved the player count for Total War Warhammer 3. We can we can see here we're still we look at that we're back to peaks of then this is this is Friday so I don't think we're going to see another thirty thousand uh, day uh, this month so that's it's the the hype of this is well and truly over. So we've also got some other posts over here that I want to go through because uh, like I said I've been enjoying reading the Reddit and I want to share some of these ones. Um, Especially this one here, if Total War AI played chess, <laughs> this was fantastic. Apart from one little thing, which everybody in the, in the comments there pointed out. Uh, in chess, white always goes first. So black doesn't go first. But anyway, there's a small distinction. So looking at how the AI is doing this, this, I, this resonates with me so much. Seeing all of their units constantly trying to reform, but their lord, their king, going straight that's an illegal move, by the way. You can't actually do that. Uh, but going straight to getting, basically, suiciding into the enemy front lines, that is such a common playbook from the AI. So it's just hilarious <laughs> seeing this stuff happen. Um, you know, you got comparison. These, these are fairly old, but, uh, you know, comparing Larian to CA. And I think that's really good. I think you guys should keep doing that. Compare Creative Assembly to other companies that are doing better than them. Uh, because it'll make them feel small, and they should feel small right now. They're the biggest company in the UK, and they're producing nothing but absolute crap. Uh, they need to do a lot better, so make them feel small so that they have no choice but to do better, because they absolutely can. You know, when they're saying things like, game too expensive to patch once every six months, buy DLC, we cancel it, that kind of shit, that is just, um, that is just like super rich people trying to make you feel sorry for them and you absolutely should not feel sorry for them whatsoever because they can do so much better they just need to actually invest in their own fucking franchise instead of bleeding from it remember how they said in the uh, rob bartholomew post which probably is i might make a video on like the the top five stupidest posts by creative assembly and that one's definitely going to be up there but anyway um where they said in order to support Total War Warhammer, this is what's required, a price increase. Let me tell you one thing. That Creative Assembly is not supporting Total War Warhammer. Total War Warhammer is supporting Creative Assembly. Make no mistake whatsoever. You guys have all of the leverage. All of it. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to take away your leverage. They're trying to take away your power, make you feel like you have none. If you withhold money from Creative Assembly for Total War Warhammer, their entire ship bloody falls. Because I really don't think that both Pharaoh and uh, Hyenas are going to be making much money. They are going to be relying on Total War Warhammer more than ever. And so what they're going to try to do is try to, um, I think, they're going to try to 
um, palm off their losses on those two games on Total War Warhammer by trying to squeeze more out of that. But don't let them do it. They're the ones that decided to make Hyenas. They're the ones that decided to make Total War Pharaoh. They should fucking just eat that cost. That's up to them. They made some stupid decisions. That's on them. Don't let... Don't... You guys shouldn't have to pay for it. So you can absolutely demand better quality from them. You know, and a bit more transparency. What is it with Creative Assembly as well? They are so dishonest. that They are so terrified of telling people the truth that they think that the community is so stupid that they'll swallow up some of the most absurd lies ever. Like, oh, it's the cost of supporting this game. There's like five people working on the friggin' DLC and it makes shitloads of money. There is no way that Creative Assembly is supporting this game. It's just not the case at all. It's the other way around. But anyway, you can make comparisons with them about companies that are doing way better than them and they should be held to that account and then you've got uh you got posts from like uh well this isn't a post from mandalore but people posting a review from him not worth the price point from mandalore mandalore is someone you can definitely trust in terms of his reviews i'm i'm terrible with reviews that's been made very clear that's why i try to avoid doing them but mandalore knows how to review a game he does a really good job of it and he, even he gave it a thumbs down he's a big fan of total warhammer by the way and then we've got this. Stop showing consumers that they can expect a well-maintained product. See this right here? Uh, I actually like that show, the, the Good Doctor. I've been watching it. But um, this is not industry standard. Man, whenever I have a conversation with Creative Assembly and I say something is not good enough, they say, but it's industry standard. Let me tell you something about industry standard. That doesn't mean shit to me. Okay, It doesn't mean shit to anyone. Industry standard is dog shit with gaming because... You could argue that what Blizzard does is industry standard. And let me tell you that Blizzard and companies on the same degree of scumbagginess should not be industry standard. What should be industry standard is... Okay, Larian maybe went above and beyond. But there is a big difference between what Larian does and what CA does. And even going somewhere in the middle would be more acceptable. Because industry standard is fucking trash and it should never be used as an excuse and anytime anyone ever says this is not industry standard laugh in their fucking face because the industry standard is on the fucking floor okay blizzard and companies like that have no standard whatsoever they're entirely built around scamming you for as much money as they possibly can get out of you there is no industry standard but what you make of it and that's really important that you guys understand that because you guys get to dictate what the industry standard is what you will and will not tolerate don't tolerate garbage from scumbag uh companies and they will stop doing garbage i suppose and then the final thing i suppose i want to get to is um total war pharaoh so this is the next Total War game, and it is currently sitting at 776 in top sellers list. Now, to be honest to it, that's the highest I've seen it so far. Okay, I've been monitoring this constantly over the past uh, few months, I suppose, and it was sitting at around 1,000. So it's starting to gain sales. Now, here's a big, here's a big kicker. The difference between being in the top 1,000 and being in the, in the top 700 is probably a handful of purchases. So we're starting to see a handful of purchases to come through in uh, Total War Pharaoh now. It'll be really interesting to see what this game does. Personally, I'm not invested in it whatsoever. I'm not going to buy it. It looks like absolute trash. And again, it's got nothing to do with the time period. I'm really interested in Ancient Egypt, in Bronze Age Egypt. But what I'm not interested in is a reskin of Troy. Because Troy's battle systems are fucking trash. And again, I watched the twitch streams of this game and it just does not look like these battles are very good and i think they're going to be really repetitive and really boring i think people who who uh purchase it are going to be really disappointed with it but that's just my thoughts i could be wrong about that but whatever the case is there is no way in hell that this game here is going to be anything other than a footnote in total wars history similar to thrones of britannia it's going to have next to no play account and will uh, just be forgotten, just like Thrones of Britannia was, because it's, it's a nothing Total War game. And the fact that they dropped the Saga title, this is this is this really gives you an idea of how dishonest Creative Assembly is, right? This is a Saga game. Make no mistake. It's just like Troy. It's a Saga game. This is a very low cost game 
that is really supposed to be like sort of a McDonald's sort of fast food type Total War game. It's not supposed to keep you uh, like constantly engaged for years to come. It's just a footnote until the next big thing that they're actually working on. And they're charging you top dollar for it because what they've done is they've just dropped off the Saga name because the Saga brand is worth garbage. It doesn't have any prestige behind it because every single Saga game is shit. The only Saga game that made them any money which, by the way, I want to point out that um, Fall of the Samurai may have been branded as a saga game, but it's not a saga game, okay? Because it, it's it's part of Shogun 2, but whatever. Um, the only game that they made, uh, like, actually did really well for them was Troy. But Troy only did well because people got it for free, and the Epic Game Store basically paid for everybody to buy get that for free. But if you have a look at Troy, nobody plays it anymore. Which leads me to believe that if they hadn't given Troy away for free, it probably wouldn't have sold very well. Uh, but, you know, there's nobody playing it now. I went and had a look on Twitch and on YouTube. There's like one or two Let's Plays with like a hundred views. That's it. Even Rome 2, like 10 year old games, Medieval 2 has more active people actually making content on it. It's hard to tell with Troy in terms of how many people are actually playing it because most people did get it from from Epic Game Store, but I really don't think anyone's still playing it. And it's the same game. So that's, uh, I really don't think this is going to go very well uh, anywhere, but uh, we'll have to wait and see with that because it's it's approaching time. It's it's only a, about a month away. We haven't got an exact release date, and that tells me that there may actually be a, uh, a, a delay in the game. I don't know. Who knows? But yeah, that's, uh, that's my sort of summary of the situation there. Um, now, if we want to get better from Creative Assembly going forward, here's what I think we need to do. We need to do more of this. On the Reddit, wherever you can, keep making memes. If you guys keep making memes, I'll shout them out, okay? Because they're hilarious. I love what you guys are doing on the Reddit. So in many ways, we're relying on the Reddit. You can't rely on YouTubers. We have no power whatsoever. Um, I, I wish, like I've, I wish I did have some influence to, to exert over Creative Assembly, but I really don't. You guys have all of the power. Make fun of Creative Assembly as a company. Don't, don't make fun of their individual employees. Most of them are perfectly fine. They're not doing anything wrong. But the company decisions as a whole, keep clowning on Rob Bartholomew. Make him a joke. Basically what you want is for the Sega employees, the people who are basically Creative Assembly's overlords, you want them to see how much of a mockery they've made of that company and take action and force Creative Assembly to uh, to stop doing that. Keep making fun of them in like a playful sort of matter. Keep comparing them to companies that are doing better. Make comparisons. Point out times when they were doing well and mock them for this garbage they're doing now. Force them to keep doing hot fixes. They've done a couple now, but they might stop if you don't press it. If you sit there and go, okay, Creative Assembly, we forgive you. And... Uh, you could just go back to charging us more money, that kind of stuff, then we, all of this was for nothing. Keep making fun of them, and also keep making it clear to them that the amount of content that you got for Shadows of Change was not acceptable. That's really, really important. I left a negative review for the DLC. I didn't leave a negative review for the for the base game. I've got a positive review for the base game, because I truly believe Total Warhammer 3 is a great game, but I think that Shadows of Change is trash in terms of value. Um, you know, the actual content is fine. If it was charged the same amount as the other ones, or even just a little bit more, I would have been fine with it. But yeah, keep doing that. And also, I think you need to make it clear to Creative Assembly constantly what you expect from Thrones of Decay. Don't just sit by and just wait for them to just... Oh, look, here, here you go, guys. This is a $30 DLC, premium DLC, and here is two lords. <laughs> you know, that's obviously an exaggeration. They're, they're, they're certainly not stupid enough to do that. But, you know, if you want four Legendary Lords for that price, then let them know that, that you want four Legendary Lords. Or if you want five Legendary Lords, let them know. Make posts about it. They're reading this stuff. They'll, they'll, they'll get the point. Um, and constantly do it. You have to do it all the way up to December. You have to not relent. If you just roll over now and be like, oh, I'll just wait for Thrones of Decay before I come back. It's, they're just going to think that they can just do the same thing again. That you'll eventually swallow it and then they'll make up the profits later down the track. You've got to keep making fun of them. Make a mockery of them because they should be ridiculed. What they did was absolutely clown worthy. Clown on that bloody blog post of theirs. You know, they should be embarrassed about that blog post for years to come. And uh, that's, that's how you can get what you want. And I'll be there to support you every step of the way. Um, 
you know, if you're going to clown on the on the company as a whole, uh, not individuals, obviously, you need to make that distinction. But yeah, creative assembly, more like clown assembly. Do whatever you can to mock them because they're they're, they're an embarrassment and they need to do better. Force them to do better because if you don't force them, they absolutely won't. Companies will only ever do the bare minimum that they feel like they need to in order to make a profit. So make that bare minimum way higher. Put them to account and make them make them work for you. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. I hope that's helped in some ways. The most important thing to take from this as well, which I haven't actually said yet, is do not, under any circumstances, attack other players. Okay? If somebody is happy with the DLC, cool. Leave them alone. Let them do whatever they want. If you're not happy with the DLC, then make your voice heard. And if you're happy with the DLC, by all means, make your voice heard as well. The point that I'm trying to make here is... Just be honest about what you want out of Creative Assembly, and you will hopefully get it. Be you know, communicate as respectfully as possible, but also clown on them with memes because memes are funny. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. I appreciate you guys, especially on the Reddit, especially my uh, community as well. Um, hope you guys are are at least enjoying yourself in one way or another. Another. I'm personally playing a shitload of uh, Starfield for all of its problems. I absolutely love the game, uh, even though it runs like ass on my computer. I've been playing it pretty much nonstop. Appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time. Later, guys.